people whose NDA have expired. What secret can you finally reveal? There are power line transformers that predate WB1 still up and running in the US. And the utility companies aren't 100% sure where most of them are. They only find out when one finally dies. Someone over 100 years ago put up a transform that powered telegrams all the way to Twitter. Edit. Okay, so people are asking. We'll try to address everything. I worked in the telecom sector. That means I needed to know something about how utility poles operated. On my first day, they handed me a binder that was an idiot's guide to utility polls and made me sign an end day on it. It was dumb because I'm sure even back then it was public information. I really do not know more than I stated. I use Love transformers at work and they are a black box of magic to me. Some people are mentioning PCBs and sure that makes sense. I don't know what they used to cool them a hundred years ago. Transformers can last a long time. I have pulled multi-decade ones out of machines. So the idea that one hit the century mark seems reasonable to me and I haven't questioned it. When my internship was over, I talked to a professor I knew about this and she mentioned the bird poop thing. I am not sure if this related to the multiple fires in California. My internship was in the Bay Area and I sort of remember the binder being general, not that one particular area. Forgive me, but this was about 2007, so I can't remember this perfectly. The last day of my university, I stuck the binder on the shelf in the engineering section of the library. I am not sure how to locate them or what they even look like. It was just a chart on paper. I admit the idea is really a cool concept, but based on what I am reading here, if you found one, be very wary. Story two, my ND is still in effect but I've covered my liability. A few years with a previous insurance company I worked for, we fired an employee who had a nasty personality. Imagine a toxic gamer working in a call center, and that would be this guy. He had been the son or grandson of one of the board members, so he was untouchable. When his relative on the board got voted out, it was finally time for this little troll to be fired. His supervisor took him to a conference room to let him know he was fired and he was escorted from the building by security. As the HR manager, I was tasked with clearing his desk and separating his property from company property. That was when I found a heavily used 5x8 notepad on his desk that had a list of names. Next to each name was a mailing addresses and details about how this ex-employee planned to harm these people. I did some digging and found they were all current or former clients of the company and that they all had filed complaints against this monster. It was a hit list. I notified the board. After an eye, I notified the police the Schmidt was arrested on unrelated drug and assault charges. The prosecutor now had to consider charging this guy for his hit list. Since she couldn't convince a judge there was a strong enough case, the prosecutor decided to impanel a grand jury. Since I was the individual who found the notepad, I was subpoenaed to confirm its provenance. Considering any other employee could have walked by and deposited this list on this asshole's desk, the grand jury decided to not move ahead to a trial for the drug and assault charges. The former employee was sentenced to 16 years in prison. As a witness, I wasn't issued a gag order regarding the grand jury investigation. However, my work did order me to sign an NDA to protect the clients who were on that hit list. It was really just to cover up that they were in any danger. I signed and then quit as soon as I got a job offer with another company. Those bastards on the board cared more about their profit margin and public image than they did about people's lives. If they figure out I'm violating that NDA, there's not much they can do. They know antagonizing me with a lawsuit would only lead to me telling the media, naming the company and ruining their public image. Edit. For clarification, the reason I signed the NDA was because I needed access to my office computer so I could look up the most recent contact information the company had for the people targeted on the hit list. I then gave that contact information to the prosecutor and her investigator. They just tracked down the last person this year and everyone is safe and accounted for. Story three, a recently hired employee trapped a secretary in a bathroom at the company Christmas party and raped her. He was caught in the act, sentenced, and will serve a long jail term. All the employees who knew about the details were forced to sign strong NDA and ordered not to talk to any other employees. No one was told why the guy didn't show up for work ever again. The victim was offered a generous payout and never came back to work. HR put out a story that she was taking time off for personal reasons, and her co-workers were never told why. Everything was hushed up as much as it could be. The company changed from open bar to drink tickets for all future company events. Story four, when Chili's first got their awesome blossom, there were no machines to cut the onion, so we did it by hand. I had to sign an end day before they showed me how to do it. This was in November 1990, Fetworth, Tex. Story five, 
used to work in a warehouse where we made feminine hygiene products. The pads came out of one machine into several different branded boxes, both the nickel gas station pads and the $10 a box pads. Also, we had one product of pads where we imported them from China, then repackaged them into our own boxes. I didn't have a problem with that. The problem I had was the box had an emblem saying, made in America. Would have been okay if it said assembled in America, but no. Story six. I used to work for a company that tracked ticket sales for theaters across the US. By contractual agreement with Hollywood Studios, we collected information for approximately 80% of theaters, but we were not allowed to collect that last 20%. Why? Hollywood Studios work very, very hard to ensure their accounting is as beneficial to the studios as possible. No surprise, all businesses do this. But Hollywood has unusually high amounts of money in very narrow products, creating a distorted market. And the industry is rife with films, grossing obscene amounts of money but not reporting a profit. Lalo and Stitch earned more money than Minority Report its opening weekend. 20th Century Fox couldn't have a Tom Cruise feature film being beaten by a cartoon. So someone at 20th Century Fox called Disney and offered a deal. Since the full amount of money earned couldn't be proven, Fox would announce that Minority Report was the top earner for the weekend. In exchange, we never knew what the exchange was. We simply knew that Minority Report was reported as the top earner, and Disney received some benefit for not saying anything. And then there was the Schmidt storm of Giggly later, but that's another story. Update. Technically, I could have said this much earlier, because when the studios found out our company wasn't handing out NDAs to employees, the studios were not happy. You do not make Hollywood studios unhappy. So the company quickly rushed to get NDAs out to everyone. They were distributed per team. They were distributed the week that I was switching teams. So both my old and my new team assumed I had an NDA when I didn't. I never bothered to correct their error. Story seven, when I was tech before I was a vet, I worked in a lab that mostly tested animal meds on animals, flea products, heartworm meds, etc. We had one product in testing for human medication though, which was an injection that supposedly was going to shorten the need to wear retainers after having braces. Of course, to test that, we needed animals that had worn braces long enough to replicate the changes that happened to human mouths that have had braces. What I'm getting at was that some days it was my job to brush the mouths of like 50 beagles that all had braces and make sure the wires and brackets were in place and not causing any trauma to the lips or gingiva. The image of dozens of goofy little dogs clack clack clacking around me in circles around the lab, super excited to see me, doing their ridiculous beagle howls and flashing their braces as they did so, will never leave my brain. Story 8. We used the B-2 in the Gulf War in 1990, six months after its official first flight, and continued using it under different call signs throughout the early and mid-90s. We did night mid-air refueling missions with it to keep people from seeing it in use. It wouldn't officially enter service until 1997. Story 9. You know those Jackbox party games? They have a database full of about 100 Jackbox games that were pitched but not used since rejected games often get featured in later party packs. Notably, one of those Jackbox games is called Poop Cake. Won't detail how it works in case it does get released, but there is a rejected Jackbox game called Poop Cake that exists and is officially documented for potential future use. Story 10, still bound, can't say where it was, was terminated three times by the same company for a disability. Ended up getting a rather large cash settlement from them to avoid taking them to court. They're bound not to say they terminated me, I gave them notice, and the next day I got a letter saying I was fired. That's not how that works. And I'm bound not to report disability discrimination or elder abuse that I witnessed. Funny story. And this can't prevent you from making a report as a mandatory reporter to a governing body in my state. I reported them anyway. They tried to claim I violated the NDA and the governing body in my state went ballistic and slammed them with a seven figure fine. The CEO, CFO, and CNO we're all forced to quit. The place is currently facing a multi-million dollar lawsuit for multiple negligent, wrongful deaths. I didn't violate the end day and kept the settlement. Story 11. Work in film VFX, so there's a lot, um, let's see. I mean, the obvious is always that studio interface charm or Schmidt movie. I've never worked on a film and heard the studio wants to reshoot this sequence. I never had it turned out to be a good thing, but my guess is 99% of you know that. So a specific, there are so many good movies you'll never get to see because of studios. I mean, you'll see them, but not until they're recut, reshot, and completely devoid of any artistic vision that created them. People point to the Snyder Cut or now Suicide Squad, and I can honestly tell you, 
If a film is over 50 million and not directed by Scorsese, Nolan, or Tarantino, it's created by a mindless collection of studio executives who don't know Schmidt about filmmaking. Ad Astra was incredible and would have been such a tribute to 2001, but the studio saw it and got scared of James making a slow-paced science fiction film that made you think. They pulled it from him, made a mess when it was given to a second editor because he wanted to add 15 million in new VFX shots, then given back to James to fix, but with this new direction. Woman in the Window was interesting and while not a great thriller, something that was decent and thought-provoking. Think Shutter Island. But three test audiences in New Jersey, a second distribution company, Fox to Disney, and a second director for massive reshoots created The Schmidt Show that was unloaded on Netflix. There are several big time films that'll never see the light of day because the studio bought them and is sitting on their release. Things you've never heard of with great directors and casts because the studio doesn't want to be associated with it for whatever reason. Weinstein was notorious for this, but several other producers have done the same. What's going on with Scarlett Johansson right now is way too common for everyone in the industry. Only difference is she's above being blackballed and has the money to pay for the lawyers needed to defend her. Finally, just know if you go to a film and say, how did they not fix that shot? Realize the director wanted to, we just didn't get approval, or who comes up with this Schmidt? It probably wasn't Schmidt until the studio got involved. Story 12. I signed an NDA for a prominent American show where they take a certain type of business on the brink of failure and transform it to save the business. When the producers of the show found out my wife and I both worked there, they tried to fish through our relationship for TV drama. When they found out we have a solid relationship, they tried to convince us to fake our drama with scripted conflict. Long story short, we got fed up and quit during shooting. We were cut from the show, oh well. Story 13, Amazon is probably here, but I'm saying it anyway. The reason why people piss in bottles is that they are fighting against taut time off task. If in a week you accumulate a combined total of 15 minutes of non-working, not break away from your station, you are reprimanded or more likely fired. So walking away to pee, taut. Slightly late to station due to high foot traffic, taut. Stop at you station for a breather because it's hot. You're tired or sick, taut. The above plus, the strict metrics and constant oversight of the lead staff makes working there feel like you are a machine. It reminds me of film representations from the 20s about the, the sadness of the future's poor. Story 14. I was Guy Fieri's body person for six months. This involved a lot of personal assistant Schmidt, booking travel, air, Ubers in a pinch. Dude usually rode around in all black sedans, confirming what the advance teams did before Guy gets there. Most of my job was to handle his personal life when he was on the job. I had to sign three NDAs, but I'm only sharing what happened on the show. Guy gave me the impression he really didn't like what he did. Every morning he would say, more of this bullshit, even on so-called buffer days, when we had an extra day before or after shooting and we had much of the day to ourselves. After three weeks of working with him, I figured out that Red Bulls are his binky. He's got some crazy ADHD, so the caffeine really didn't phase him. When he would get stressed out, he'd rage up a little, but then he'd completely shut down. A Red Bull just made him calm again. Guy does not remember the Schmidt, he says. People walk up to him and joke about Flavortown, and he'd look at me after the fact and ask, What's Flavortown? I had to remind him that he came up with that. My favorite was someone who went on a cruise. Apparently, Carnival Cruise Lines has guys' restaurants. I haven't been on a cruise yet. I'll find out sooner or later. Anyway, this fan loved the donkey sauce that he put on his burgers. Dude deadass didn't remember he did that. I had access to his computer, and I saw recipe drafts for D-Sauce. There were scores of events similar to this. Every single time. Guy would have no idea. It sort of floors me that this guy influences so many people, and he doesn't give a damn. He doesn't hate his fans, but he thinks interacting with people is a hassle. He legit doesn't understand why he's a celebrity, which boggles my mind how much effort he puts into his shtick. That one British chef who lied about cooking for the queen has more cognizance about his fame than Guy. On a personal note, his family is full of sweethearts, and I went above and beyond a few times to help them out. All I want to say about his fam. They're really nice people. Edit. Correcting something inaccurate, I said. Robert Irvin lied about <laughs> cooking for four U.S. presidents, <laughs> having a British knighthood, <laughs> owning a castle in Scotland, uh, and helping make the wedding cake for Charles and Diana. Stir. Some other things he never said he cooked for Queen Elizabeth II. That sinking? Feel regrets the error, considering it was over 13 years ago. Story 15. I used to work in a call center that had Bayer advanced, yes, that Bayer, as a client. Bayer knew knows full well that their neonicotinoid-based pesticide gardening products killed bees 
and were responsible for colony collapse. We were instructed to boldface deny and or lie to the customer or caller if we were ever asked about it. We were also instructed to lie about the spray nozzles on the bottles. Bayer knew they sucked ass and were almost always completely DOA defective, but they refused to admit it and decided it was cheaper to just keep mailing replacement nozzles. Story 16. The sequel trilogy had a plan. You can even see the narrative coming over the hill for the final stretch in the closing moments of The Last Jedi. Kylo Ren was supposed to die evil. He was literally supposed to be an embodiment of the antithesis of the hero's journey. Like, if Luke Skywalker was born evil and had to resist the light to become ultimate evil, it would be Rey's one great failure. She could not save him. It was supposed to be a message to young girls that just because you want to fix someone doesn't mean you'll always succeed. However, TPTB, <laughs> Kathleen Cuff, chickened out when they saw how huge the Raylo fandom was and scrapped their plans for Nine and hired JJ to crap out whatever the hell rise of Skywalker was. I cannot wait for the tell-alls to be written about the making of that trilogy. I have tons more details about what went down too, like Driver only being down for the role, if the ending stayed the same, and how pissed he was when it changed. Story 17. Just a friendly reminder that under no circumstances can an NDA prevent you from disclosing a crime. The contract is not legal in that case, and the NDA is dismissed. So if your boss made you sign one to not report them for something illegal, you can absolutely report them. Story 18. I found pallets of candy in the top of the racks that was behind displays and furniture in my Walmart. One pallet had been the home of a mother rat and her brood. Did you know rats don't like raisins? but we'll eat the chocolate off and leave the raisins in a pile. Management decided to put the unopened bags of candy on sale in the clearance aisle instead of disposing the rat-infested pallet. Story 19. Uber was planning to make their own Google Street View for use in the app to better help drivers find riders and to map the world for driverless car technology. But they were going to use Uber drivers to capture the images for the Street View. The plan was to mail out inexpensive GoPro-like devices that magnetically attached to the roof of the driver's cars. Each would have SD cards that could be mailed back to Uber. Routes would be generated, and the drivers could accept them in the app and get paid. This plan fell through quickly, and Uber eventually sources this data from third parties and ultimately abandoned their in-house driverless car ambitions. Also, Microsoft developed a really cool backpack-mounted camera that was gonna be used for something like Google Street View. The plan was to take it into pedestrian-only areas so you could get imagery indoors, like malls and in walking spots. The United States military snatched up the entire project for their own use, and that product was never released or even announced to consumers. Story 20. When Google Stadia was just a thing that was being thought about by the company, their totally useful, helpful market research demo wasn't even a little indicative of what they were doing. They showed five seconds of a cutscene from what I think was an Assassin's Creed game. Just a bird flying over a forest and asked whether it was good. Story 21, many, many companies have really schmitty network security, where from a bar in front of the building, you could connect to their open Wi-Fi and use default passwords on multi-million Euro machines. Story 22, I was part of the beta testing for DC Universe Online. I remember a few missions that were voiced probably just by developers before they hired the voice actors to do it. I wish I had saved footage of it, but there was one where Supergirl was clearly voiced by a man doing a high-pitched falsetto voice. One of the funniest things I've ever seen. Story 23. Netflix has created a group of AI that will essentially be like the Skynet of streaming media. It can predict with crazy accuracy what you'll click on based on not only your previous views and clicks, but the time of year it is in your location, the weather going on outside your window, and the kinds of movies you like to watch when it's raining or snowing. It figures out your likely holidays celebrated, your favorite colors, typefaces, and genres. This leads into the marketing AI. They have created an AI-driven software that creates movie posters and promotional art for a film or show appear to be whatever genre they want. For instance, it'll create artwork for an action movie that makes the movie look like a rom-com if you're into rom-com and not actions. It's literally an automated, super smart Photoshop like computer, just for film, TV, artwork. Story 24. Don't buy fine art except from a real dealer in a working gallery or a specific specialist. Never just anywhere. The Caribbean cruise industry is so full of vanity galleries. It's a scandal waiting to happen. Edit spelling. Story 25. I worked as a freelance 3D animator and did a lot of Kickstarter projects. Everyone had their own million dollar idea and loved to blast you with NDAs and to keep you from stealing their idea. Anyways, one guy wanted to basically make a type of smart belt that just played videos, 
and was convinced he was going to sell it to Gucci. The guy was super nice, uh, paid, paid really well, and was a joy to work for, but had no business sense. Well, the NDAs expired and the Kickstarter page seems to be erased from the internet. So here's the trailer I ended up making. Basically, the belt was physically impossible to manufacture, but he wouldn't let me alter the design to fix it. Made for some cool shots for my demo reel though. Story 26. One, unless things have changed drastically, that popular restaurant being accused of selling not tuna really is actually selling tuna and not cheap stock either. It's just masked by a Schmidt load of mayonnaise. Two, they actually sent out their olives for DNA testing because they were sure one of the suppliers was selling them an olive of cheaper quality, which also makes the tuna thing make no sense to me. Three, I knew about specials and new things way before they ever made it into the store. We'd start testing the stock at least six months before a promotion started. Four, shady hiring employment practices were the norm, similar to what FedEx Ground was accused of in a lawsuit from about seven years ago. Edit, okay, so I was quality assurance. I knew the menu and food items inside and out, with and without sauces, things that were experimented with that never wound up in stores. You, the ace trainer, mentioned adding pickle juice to the tuna. Little changes like that became allowed about eight years ago. It was never said in so many words, but I think the execs were pressured by the few franchisees who owned a good chunk of the stores to allow them leeway. So you might run into some non-standard things offered in stores. Example, in the Chicago area, you may see Giardiniera. This may be elsewhere by now, I don't know. Or the pickles may taste different, better. Oh man, I ate those by the cup. I saw allow because if there is one thing they hate, it's any kind of difference in food between regions and stores. Story 27. I work for a moving company and we work with a women's shelter often enough. Typically, women escaping abuse will have the shelter hire us to go in and get their belongings, sometimes with police company. And all the movers sign NDAs to protect the women from letting their new addresses slip. I can't disclose anything that interesting, but I want to take the opportunity to say, those people who jump at the slightest sound, the littlest surprise, be nice to them because you don't know whether they are just jumpy naturally or if there's a reason they are like that now. Story 28. Tesla has failed six attempts to get their cars licensed for racing by the FIA. I can't say anything past that, but if you feel like checking the registry, you'll find they're still not licensed. I didn't enjoy the battery melting under me when we pushed the car to the limits. Not that I enjoy the threat of a lawsuit if I didn't change my report. Damn, Tesla. It's a real shame, though, because I love electric cars. They're 100% the future of motorsports, and I really wish there were more batteries capable of emptying at the rate needed without breaking. Story 29 worked in consulting, still don't want to share details and still have many NDAs. I know it kind of defeats the purpose of this thread, but one thing I can tell you is the vast majority of time you see a consulting firm start assisting your workplace. Heads are about to roll in terms of layoffs. Many times we were brought in to be the bad guys and to implement decisions that management wanted but didn't want to be linked to too heavily. Also, management almost assuredly have a list of employees who would be first to go should something go awry. Suck up to them. Story 30. Not sure if I'm no longer bound or not, or how common knowledge it is, but living in NYC, I was paid to be a fan at a major red carpet movie premiere for a popular film franchise. 100% of the people there were paid to act excited as famous actors, and a very famous director walked out and said hello and did interviews. We were under strict instructions not to let anyone know we were hired. Story 31. Spoiler alert, if you are watching Teen Wolf and haven't gotten past episodes filmed in 2013, but the character of Allison Argent will be killed off. I was on set when that death was being discussed by cast members and was therefore required to sign an NDA that made me liable for something like $2 million in damages if I disclosed what I knew before the air date. Genre TV takes its spoilers. Seriously. Story 32. I had to sign an NDA before working with Sears. It was basically saying I wouldn't talk about the tactics they were using to survive in a changing world. That didn't age well. It was difficult to keep a straight face during orientation, but I knew they were going to be bankrupt in a few years. The writing was on the wall, but at the time I needed the job experience. We also had to sign a non-compete agreement, which I laughed at as well, internally of course. Story 33. Not my own, but from a family friend, Coca-Cola and Pepsi regularly settle disputes behind closed doors on things like employees trying to quit and join the competitor. Their employment contracts have entire clauses stating you cannot be employed by the competing companies even after you quit so to protect company intel and confidentiality. For example, a Coca-Cola employee feels like he is being mistreated by the company, so he quits and tries to work for Pepsi. So Pepsi's legal team will inform Coca-Cola 
As soon as they find out, and Coca-Cola will sue the guy for breach of contract, and in return, Pepsi will pay them. This is done so Pepsi and Coca-Cola don't sue each other's into bankruptcy for breach of laws regarding industrial competition and market regulations. Basically, a peace treaty of sorts. Story 34. The lead single off of Taylor Swift's third album is called Mine. I went to a taping where she performed the song prior to its release in the summer of 2010. I was 18 and signed an NDA. I had no one to discuss it with until the single came out a few months later. Story 35. 1. YouTube is the most unethical platform on earth. If you are a high-value account, most of the policies of YouTube won't touch you. For example, there was a Brazilian kid twerking with his small sister that was dressed very provocatively. Normally, YouTube would take down this video for minor contextualization, but because the account had some millions of followers, not only it remained live on the platform, but also had a safety net in case a stupid agent tried to take it down. Two, every day there are thousands upon thousands of very horrible videos being uploaded on YouTube, and it's up to a human being to go through them and take an action. As you can understand, a lot of agents develop depression, anxiety, PTSD, and other mental problems due to the nature of the videos they are watching. Story 36, your phone company doesn't always comply with FCC regulations involving the recording of phone calls. A lot more may be recorded and insecurely stored than you realize. Story 37. I don't know if I'm still bound or not, but I want to say my last Kito knew nothing about tech. Yet we warned them and asked for upgrades. No upgrades and a few months later, they got a ransomware virus that cost them half a mil. Story 38. A girl I worked with at Starbucks put a sleeping pill in a regular's venti mocha. My coworker was an absolute schmidt, and I never knew why she decided to inform me of what she had done. But I definitely told upper management almost immediately, and she was let go, and I was told to keep quiet. The regular was a huge bitch, but I would just decaf her, not literally put her to sleep. Story 39. Some tech companies don't want their products to be better. I started working for a parking technology company as their ITPM. Our installs improved drastically by using my military background to design document, deploy, rinse, repeat. Plus, I was a slave, so I worked 70 hours a week. Then, when I expected the boss to be happy, he said, don't make it work too good. We make money on service too. Since my methods were implemented, service decreased, which I thought was good and would drive in more sales. In the end, I was just working myself to death for someone without gratitude. Story 40. I worked on a legal survey for a lawsuit over the murder of Philando Castile back in 2016 that was conducted by dailing various people across the US and asking them various questions, one of which was an open-ended question where they were invited to describe any incidents of police brutality they had personally experienced or witnessed, which the interviewer was then supposed to type word for word. I worked both an interviewer and as a quality assurance professional, which meant it was my job to go through completed surveys and check spelling and grammar errors, as well as check to make sure the information being entered was accurate. So if any of the open-ended typed responses didn't make sense, or seemed like they were typed incorrectly, I would go back and listen to the survey and retype the response exactly. On this particular survey, since it was so important legally, we had to go back and listen to every open-ended response, something we normally would only do like 10% of the time. There was one response where the surveyed man had described an incidence of racial profiling and police brutality based on the fact that he was Latino. The interviewer didn't type any of it and just typed no as the response. We went back and listened to every survey that individual had conducted on the project, and she had been intentionally coding responses incorrectly to twist the data into a more positive opinion of police in general. It was clear she had a bias that she was expressing in the incorrect coding. She was removed from the project, and we edited her survey input to reflect the actual responses. Story 41. Pretty sure I'm still under the NDA, but when you donate your body to science, you're doing great things. But holy schmidt, can that be a real gut punch for those of us learning with the use of said body, packing wounds, anatomy, using new medical interventions, chalk items. I learned a lot when I got the chance to do a lesson that involved working with a human body. It isn't pleasant, and I can see how someone on the outside or even that person's family members would not be okay with it at all. But donate your body. Seriously. They had told us they had issues with being able to get bodies of younger, healthier individuals. And that was limiting how well they could teach. Packing a wound on a 300 plus pound person or someone less than 100 pounds isn't realistic for what we're doing. Still a valuable lesson. Just would have been better if we had healthier individuals. I think the worst was when our instructor had talked to us about how you'll hear a pop when you place an NCD. Look it up. It's 
cool as Schmidt, in my opinion, into a patient and just stabbed this guy with a scalpel. You could hear that pop, and he did it again and again and again. It made us kind of numb to that sound. Also, when this guy had basically slit the corpse's throat after putting in an advanced airway so we could see the anatomy behind it, was wicked. For those who had loved ones, donate their bodies to science. Know that we took great care in being respectful, while also being able to learn valuable lessons. We all greatly benefited from those experiences. For those who are wondering if they should donate their bodies, you should. I wish I could do more of those classes. And I know many others who feel the same. There are such great learning experiences that can't be replicated with training dummies. Story 42. We had an employee that was constantly calling in sick. Twice, we had to call an ambulance to work, because of her heart palpitations. Her fellow employees told us that she would call them that night to go shopping after being removed by ambulance hours earlier. There were a lot of rumors of drug use. She would show up the next day like nothing happened the day before. There was drama about her having to pay the ambulance bills first before our health plan would reimburse her. Her stoner boyfriend got fired from the company, which just ramped up her emotional distress and inability to show up for work. Our manager decided to cut our losses and package her out. He was finalizing her termination package, which would have included a severance payment that would have solved their short-term money problems when she quit. I saw her a couple of years later on an airplane. I didn't tell her what she missed out on. Story 43. Xfinity Internet officially sucks balls. Not that's any secret. Buy your own equipment and stop paying then rental fees, along with any XFI advanced security feature charge bullshmit they offering you. Company-wise, they know you a sucker. Edit. Why is this under NDA? I'm a former Xfinity software developer who worked on gateway firmware updates designed to slow down your network to make you think outside forces were the cause, thus trying to sell you an advanced security package that negated the intentional slowdowns under the guise of network security. And now, I can talk about it. Story 44. Community-aged care companies hide family abuse of elders so they don't lose the client's contract from assault, sexual assault, fraud, theft, etc., etc. I luckily work for a company that reports all suspected elder abuse, but I worked for a company that weaponized NDAs to hide the abuse. Story 45. I worked in a youth services care group for children with problematic homes. Primarily, the children teens were sent to us because their homes were deemed unsafe. Regular abuse, sexual abuse, having 500 gram of cocaine on the coffee table being the norm rather than the exception, etc. As you can imagine, growing up in such a toxic environment breeds toxic people. So more often than not, these teens have no clue how to interact with their environment other than self-destructive behavior. That's not to say there aren't gems of people in there, but that's not the topic of this post. One day when I arrived to work, I was ushered into our office area which was highly unusual. The director of the home asked me whether I had seen anything in the news about an old man being robbed. I hadn't, but apparently a 70-year-old man was jumped by three young guys, beaten to within an inch of his life, and robbed. We had very strong indications pointing to one of our teens as being one of the possible perpetrators. I was told that if I wanted to start my shift, I was to sign a document that I would be fired on the spot if I went to the police with these suspicions, because it would be a breach of client trust. By the time my shift was over, police had already been on the premises. I can only assume because someone went to the police directly after their shift was over, and I couldn't agree more with them. Since management didn't have proof that anyone in particular leaked the info, no one got fired. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is when I realized youth home groups are way too overprotective of the youth in their care. I get it, if I had to go to the police every time I was punched, kicked, had something thrown at me, found drugs, found out some girl had been prostituting herself, etc. My shift would be nothing but calls to the police, but holy schmidt, we were basically asked to cover up attempted murder. Luckily, the old man recovered, but apparently it could have easily gone the other way. Story 46. I came up with an idea for a TV show that followed a women's basketball team through a season while employed by them. And after submitting a pilot to a large production company, they colluded with the athletic department to take the name and concept, but use it for the men's basketball team because, in their words, no one cares about women's basketball. I had equipment, people, and funding set up, and no one that knew clued us in. We found out from Twitter when the men's team announced it with the production and distribution company. Got offered a job with them later, but quit media altogether, and taught high school for a few years. Now I'm back making content. Story 47. An Aussie no-name company is building the largest gold vault in the world, in Dubai. It will be 20 stories below ground, and above ground will look like an everyday shop. To build the hole, they have built a covering structure over so no one sees what's happening. Story 48. Not actually under a NDA, 
but the information is. The manager of the educational wing of a big company in my country that I worked for during my apprenticeship had, probably multiple times already, invited graduates, all of them of age, doesn't make it better though, to his house for dinner and then drugged and raped them. He was immediately arrested and fired, but this would have made national, if not global news. Story 49, basically every local news show in the United States and probably elsewhere, gets marching orders from the network. Each of them is privately owned, and for the most part, they can report on whatever they want and do whatever special segments and so on they want. But some stories, particularly the major national news and important local news that is of national interest, say, Senate elections or a high-profile murder that happened in your market, you get copy from the network that you are meant to have your editors or anchors translate to a script. Most stations end up just reading it entirely or nearly verbatim from the copy sent. This is how you get. If you paid attention, you'd find this everywhere, basically every day. It's just very few people watch local news in more than one market in the same day, and the copy will be different depending on who owns the station. So while the stories may be similar, you won't get exactly the same wording on two different local stations. Story 50. I work one-on-one -on -one as a support worker. A kid I support with a disability told me his other carer, my coworker, walks around the house without a shirt off and tries to get him to take his clothes off. The coworker calls it boys' night. Anyway, I found shirtless photos of said coworker in the kid's kitchen on the work phone in the trash file, reported it straight away. The kid was taken to make a report at the police station. He told them everything. Long story short, they found insufficient evidence against the guy, and he can continue working with the kid. The kid hates him and never leaves his room now when he works. I think I need to take matters into my own hands soon. Your Story 51. Hillram Welch Allen Medical Equipment functions on the same level as Amazon Medical Equipment for $40 instead of $12,000. The software is buggy as hell, and they have no intention of fixing it. This includes their vision line. Story 52. I saw Middle Earth, Shadow of Mortar, and Deus Ex, Mankind Divided before they were announced. Middle Earth looked visually impressive as Xbox One and PS4 hadn't come out yet. But besides the main character in a big landscape, there wasn't much to see. Deus Ex was much earlier in development and it was just a gray boxed room and a gun. But I was pretty sure it was a Dew X game because it was rumored there was a new one in development. Story 53. This may be common knowledge, but the self-checkouts at the grocery stores work based off of weight. It reads in the barcode what a product should weigh and throws up errors when you go to bag it if the weight isn't within a certain range. This is great for most items and this why you have to have bakery items and produce on the scale before you bag it. Knowing this, you can weigh any item as something else cheaper. If you have overworked people not paying attention to what you are doing, just make sure to keep the barcode from being scanned. $20 hair care product, ring it as a donut. Pack of steaks, ring it as a donut. Also, some Walmart stores in low theft areas, white suburban areas, don't even have the bagging scales turned on, while some in more ethnically diverse areas have the sensitivity set so high that if you put your grocery list in the bags, it will throw errors. Story 54. Cash Cab gets most of its contestants through a tryout process where it pretends to be another show. Then a producer says, they will get you a cab to go to the next location, which is how people get surprised. Story 55. In Assassin's Creed Syndicate, there was this crazy bug in the earlier version of the game, which would cause all the people nearby to become heavily distorted. The easiest place to trigger this was the River Thames by climbing up to the vantage point and then looking down into the water. The human characters would distort into this crazy nightmare fuel of arms pushed through the sockets at the shoulder. Gigantic facial features or gigantic legs. Considering the company I was working for, laid us all off a few months after. Unrelated, they were moving their QA to their European offices. I wish I had have smuggled at least a screenshot. Emo six years is long enough to wait for something funny that never made it into the official product. Story 56. So back in the recession when everyone was strapped for cash and the state of Michigan was offering big tax incentives to film companies, HBO filmed a show at my high school. I honestly don't know if some staff knew the details of the show, but had an NDA or if our school was so desperate for money they just said, yes, no questions asked. All we knew was the lead is a high school teacher who also coached the basketball team. So there were classroom scenes, a basketball game they used our actual team for, and a pre-game speech scene in the locker rooms, all using actual students as extras. Later, we found out the show is called Hung and is about a high school teacher with a big penis 
who becomes a prostitute. When this news came out prior to the show's release, school staff and parents were outraged, mainly at the idea that scenes with students would be followed in the episode by graphic Kex scenes. We students thought it was hilarious. And it's HBO. Even if no questions were asked, are details given? Graphic Kex scenes are a safe bet. The school should have known better, but it became a local scandal, covered on the evening news. Story 57. Over 20 years ago, I took part in a pre-trial hearing. A nearby dam was being sued by the family of a dam worker. The family was suing for an undisclosed amount to one, cover medical expenses, two, pain and suffering, and three, negligence of maintenance of the facility. What happened? The dam had received multiple complaints about lack of maintenance. This particular dam was a working dam, but hadn't been maintained in several decades. Before the incident, an engineer had written a report saying the maintenance supports for the walk ways above the boilers needed to be completely closed until replaced. This was not done. A maintenance worker went onto the walk way above the boilers. The walkway failed, and the worker was plunged into boiling water, completely submerging him. His co-workers were able to retrieve him in under 30 seconds. This worker spent the next nine months in the ICU before dying to infection. His body suffered 99.9% three-degree burns. We awarded, in the pretrial hearing, 1,000,000 per second the man was boiled. Additionally, all medical expenses paid and the remaining possible wages earned paid in full, including full medical and dental to the family for the next 35 years. TLDR, man was boiled alive because the company was cheap. Story 58, Packard Bell, when they sold personal computers, replaced three to four inch screws with much longer ones grounding the power supply against the computer case. I only found out after I left. Story 59, the guy's dead now, so here goes. Paul Allen was sitting around his house one day and happened to watch a segment of a nature documentary on pygmy seahorses. His assistants picked up on his glimmer of interest and organized an excursion on his yacht to go visit the habitat of these animals. They brought along a marine biologist to provide more information. On the yacht, each member of the small party that was actually getting in the water to view the seahorses was equipped with a sea scooter. They found the animals. The marine biologist gave his talk. It was a very successful outing. As they turned to leave the area, Paul takes a wide turn on the sea scooter and just mows down a big chunk of the habitat. I'm guessing some type of sea plant, which definitely contained many of the little animals. Apparently, he was oblivious or didn't care, but the marine biologist was livid. Back on the yacht, the crew have to go to great lengths to calm the biologist down and somehow get them to sign the NDA. Op was not aboard the yacht. Story 60. The Navy has a marine mammal program that has recently investigated the possibility of training dolphins to locate black boxes lost when aircrafts go down in the ocean. Honestly, this isn't even close to the coolest thing about that program, but most of it is public information and could be discovered with a quick Google search. Story 61 didn't sign an official NDA, but was bribed with sweet swag. My friend and I went to a local distillery to acquire some yummy vodka. They were offering tastings, and I struck up a conversation with one of the owners, who ended up offering us tastes of a new product that would be aging for about two more years before bottling. The guy told us that it was made from a grain that we would never ever guess it was made from, then invited us to guess. Being a bit of a geek, I said, the first thing that popped into my head, triticle. Think Star Trek with the tribbles eating the quadro triticle. The poor guy went dead white. I thought he would pass out. He begged us not to tell. We said no problem and that we'd sure buy some when it came out. He then gave us some nice branded swag as a thank you. This was years ago, and I did buy some Triticle whiskey. Not bad. Story 62. If you ever are asked to sign an NDA after you know the thing they want you to not disclose, please get a lawyer to help negotiate. You are really playing who wants to be a millionaire. Story 63. Soundgarden's single by Crooked Steps off of King Animal is going to have a music video that is directed by Dave Grohl and features a cameo by Deadmau5. Not so interesting because it was 10 years ago, but I was an extra for the music video. Got to meet a bunch of super cool and interesting folks. Chris Cornell, a rip, was polite but seemed distant and anxious. Deadmau5 was a goofy nerd and we got along well. Dave Grohl is exactly how you imagine him, just an absolute gem. Story 64, I was in charge of a major portion of the nuclear button. Much of the NDA and much of what was classified has been declassified, including the fact that I even worked on the project, was negated when the program manager committed fraud and the project was canceled. This was about 30 years ago, so between that and the early cancellation of the project, anything may have been interesting to foreign powers has long since been altered. It was a fascinating and, at times, nerve-wracking year of my career. Story 65. 
If you own a Samsung TV in North America, mainly the States, and have updated the firmware since 2015, it can recognize what you watch, even if it's not a broadcast channel, provided it has a clip to match in an online database, and can send this info to provide stats on what you watch. These stats can rival the usual ratings for TV in that they're amazingly accurate and updated every few seconds. They're worth millions. They also build up a profile of you as a viewer, and this feeds an advertising profile based on watching habits. Software on the TV can play a video over content you watch, the idea being to replace commercials that you watch with more appropriate ones. I don't know how much of this is still being done, but when I stopped being involved because it's abhorrent, it was 18 them TVs, it all sounds fine, when you think of it as you getting more adverts for stuff you might buy and fewer for stuff you won't. Now, imagine the nutcases, you know, seeing adverts you never see, that lie about COVID and vaccination, and that kind of conspiracy schmidt. And this becomes a buy a presidency system. Story 66. This is technically classified, but it's pretty known and very low in classification. We have these big switchboard style machines that scramble messages and can unscramble them. It makes it so that if somebody taps the line, all they get is a random mess. It's used in war zones to relay messages between bases. Story 67. Internet companies say up to X download speed. That is true. Some devices are not even capable of delivering half the speed they are selling. You can only trust the speeds if they are fiber. Story 68. I do remember signing an NDA for a big-name cell phone carrier and doing tech support. It really didn't occur to me at first, but my annoyance that all the managers knew about Samsung phone batteries overheating and just telling customers it was nothing was probably the start of the problem that led to the Note 7 issue. I guess basically, the phone carrier knew of the problem and kept ignoring it, which probably isn't a big secret NDA thing. But I did also see the newer iPhone coming out at the time. That was in 2014. Story 69. I once read an audition side for a then unnamed Pixar project that eventually became the monster bomb known as the Good Dinosaur. The titular dinosaur named Arlo in the movie was named Simon at one time. Story 70. Let's just say, if you are Australian, don't eat at a hog's breathe cafe. There is a reason why the company is failing hard and a lot of kitchens have been shut. Story 71. I didn't really have to sign an NDA. Back in 2004, I worked for Kirby Vacuums, selling $2,000 vacuums. I was making great money because I got them for $1,200 and made profit on anything I sold over that. My team leader got them for $800, so he made $400 off of each sale. His boss got them for $550, but since he was also the regional manager, he actually got them for $350, so he made $450 off of every vacuum sold in the region. I can only imagine how much it actually cost to make them. Once I found this out, I had a hard time selling them because I felt I was ripping people off and had to quit. Story 72, somewhat off topic. I worked as a featured extra for four months on a Disney film, which belongs to a beloved franchise. Normally, end days are common and expire when the film is released, as all the information is in the public domain. But this particular film, the NDA stated, this NDA does not expire when the film does. It is forever. So yeah, even though I'm visible and you can see me, I'm not allowed to tell people it's me, including people who have recognized me. Go figure. Story 73. I used to work for Cyan Worlds, Inc. in Quality Assurance. I was working on an outsourced project legendary for PS3, XB360, PC. The developer Spark Unlimited directed us not to fix any bugs, problems with the game, unless it causes it to crash, and basically didn't care about the quality. Of course we couldn't say that or admit to the lack of care for the finished product or customers. Turns out the game got awful reviews. I wonder why? Story 74, part of the focus group that saw the new Subaru Outback Wilderness Edition. Not that big of a deal, but we gave our input, and it's funny to see some of the talking points show up in their promo material, and even some suggested changes make it to the car itself. Beefier tires. I've only had a few NDAs ever, but sadly, this is probably the coolest one. I guess playtesting for Konami was kind of cool, but nothing super juicy came out of it except the developers. Story 75. Naked and afraid, and I'm assuming most reality shows, had a clause in the NDA and contract that said one's image could be used in any way the production company saw fit. This included voice, image, etc., and that the audio may not match the video that was recorded at the same time. It was then that I realized how much these shows are edited down before the public ever sees them. It had never dawned on me that they manipulated things that much. Oh, and it paid like 7K for 21 days of filming. Story 76. I did a playtest for the Square Avengers game. It was less of a playtest and more of a watch this video. 
and tell us what you think about it. They also described the game a bit. I wrote a lot about how selling an incomplete gacha game for $60 and then doling out new heroes or skins or level packs or whatever over time will not work, and they would do a lot better releasing a completed action RPG. Clearly, they did not listen to the feedback. Story 77. Mine's not as exciting as everyone else's, but I had to sign an NDA that I wouldn't reveal the location of Emma Watson, Sarah Ronan, and Timothée Chalamet. While shooting Little Women 2019 movie as my first extra gig, I was excited. Story 78. I worked on an Eggos waffle commercial. The concept was a mom and son eating waffles in the kitchen. That is all. They make us sign in days for Schmidt like this. I'm telling the world anyway. 